Hi everybody, I'm Paul and this is Maggie and this is Francine and we're here with two of our animal ambassadors, two really cool animals. This is Tallulah and Peterson and these guys are southern tamanduas. Uh, they're also called lesser anteaters too because they are a form of anteater, but they're fully grown, they stay small. There are giant anteaters out there. And if you come to the zoo and you go to Tropic World, you'll see our giant anteaters over there. They're really, really big. This is as big as these guys ever get. And one of the main reasons that they stay so small is because they're arboreal. And what that means is they climb trees. So they're really well adapted for climbing up in those trees and finding all the termites and all the ants that live up there. So you can see her four claws up here, her front claws. She's got one really, really big toe, and that toe is perfect for climbing those trees and grabbing onto bark. And it can actually rip the bark right off of a tree to get those ants and other bugs that they might, that they love to eat. Um, if you look at her tail down here, her tail is also really well adapted for climbing too. It's got um, less hair on it than the rest of her body because that helps her grip because that's a prehensile tail. So if you've been following Quilbert, our prehensile tailed porcupine on her Facebook page, um, it's very similar to that. They use that tail to grab onto branches to climb around. And so Peterson over here is foraging in our fake termite mound that actually was made here by some of our really talented people over in our exhibits department. So he's getting some bugs out of there and they get those bugs out with their really, really long tongue. So their tongue is about 11 inches long and it's covered in a very sticky saliva. So it's kind of like Elmer's glue. All they have to do is touch an ant or a bug and they can just slurp them right up. And so you can also see he's eating a little bit of baby food too, uh, because out in the wild they will eat some overripe fruit, but they can't really take big bites out of things. Um, because if you, yeah, there we go, we can really see his tongue there. And if you look at his mouth, he actually cannot open his mouth any wider than a pencil eraser. So it's a very narrow opening, so they can't really take big chomps out of like an apple or anything like that. Um, and even if they could, they actually have no teeth to chew those fruits with. So that, things that they eat have to be soft or very, very small. And then what they do is once they eat those, those ants or that really you know, mushy fruit, they have um, what's called a gizzard, which is like a muscular stomach, kind of like some birds do. And they actually grind up their food in their stomach. So it's kind of like they chew their food after they've eaten it. So it's kind of neat like that. So you can see they have a little bit of a different pattern on them. They both have these cool black vests, it's very stylish. Um, but depending on where the tamanduas are from in their range, so these guys can be found from Colombia all the way down to the southern part of Brazil, um, tamanduas in different areas have different patterns. So the ones that are found in kind of more the southeastern region um, tend to be kind of like Peterson with that really stark black uh, vest there. And then the ones in the rest of the range can be kind of like Tallulah where they're a little bit more blonde, or they can be entirely blonde, or they can have some more brown in them. Um, so there's a lot of variation across just um, these guys as a species, too. So you can see Tallulah's kind of foraging through this big, cool pile that we made her. We hit a lot of worms in there. And that's one of the things we do with our animals here is we offer them a lot of what we call behavioral enrichment. And that's just things that help them express their natural behaviors. So out in the wild, these guys go around and they find all sorts of different ant and termite mounds and, and nests and things like that. And then they, they stop there and they forage for a little while. They just, you know, they eat maybe a you know, bunch of ants and then they'll wander off and find more. So they actually have to hunt for their food. And that's what we do here. We help them hunt for their food. So they stay mentally stimulated and they stay active. And it's also kind of fun for them too. So tomatoes are really great conservationists too because when they do hunt for their food, and <laughs> Peterson's trying to find some ants inside his uh, little tree here. Um, when they do hunt for their food, uh, they only spend about a minute at each ant and termite mound. Um, and the reason for that is, one, ants and termites can bite, so you don't want to hang around for too long. And then the other reason is they only eat a little bit so that those ant and termite mounds can survive. They don't really damage them. They don't do permanent damage by taking just a few ants and termites at a time. Um, and then they can always come back tomorrow to take a few more because more ants will be born. So overall, these guys can eat between about 8,000 and 9,000 ants in a day. So they're, they're quite good exterminators. Um, here we give them mealworms and waxworms. And you can see we've given them some avocado. It's kind of just a little additional treat. Um, and then we also give them kind of a, a mix that our nutritionists develop. It's basically kind of a, like what we call protein shake. Is, um, but it's basically... Um, all the nutrients that they would find in, 
in the insects, but it's kind of in liquid form. So it's kind of gross to us, but they love it. So these guys, they have pretty poor eyesight, but they have really, really great, a uh, really, really great sense of smell. So you can see that really long nose. Well, I don't know if two of those kind of, there you go. So there's a lot of scent receptors in that really long nose of hers. Um, and so they can sniff out all the bugs and the ants and other things that are hiding. So a lot of times when I tell people that these guys can eat ants and termites, they joke that they would love to have them in their house. But really, if you had one of these guys in their, your house, if they smelled any sorts of ants or termites behind a drywall, well, they would just rip your walls apart to get in. Um, and then also one of the reasons that you really, really wouldn't want one of these guys in your house, uh, something that you guys can't tell right now, is they stink. We love these guys, but they smell. Uh, they've got a very similar scent to skunks. Uh, they really don't spray it like skunks do. Oh, here comes Peterson in from the side. <laughs> They don't really spray it like skunks do, but they can really um, emit a powerful odor um, if a predator comes along or if they get really, really scared. They can really intensify that smell and it's pretty gross and it's kind of telling the predator, you know, if I smell this bad, how do you think I taste? Um, and the things that might try to eat these guys out in the wild are things like jaguars and smaller wild cats um, and harpy eagles too, the biggest eagles in the world would actually take these guys right out of trees if they can see them. So they, they try to stay hidden. Um, they're primarily nocturnal, so they're mostly active at night, but sometimes you can find them out in the daytime too. And as you can see right here, these guys are more than happy to be out in the daytime because they know they're getting all their fun treats and things like that. <laughs> they are messy eaters too. They don't have very, very good manners. Um, do you guys have any questions? Are there any questions about uh, Tulula and Peterson, the Tamanduas? Yes, how long do they live? They can live about 10 years or so. Um, there is some, some debate as to exactly how long, but that's ge the general consensus. Are there any anteaters in North America? There are no anteaters in North America, but you know what? These guys are what's called um, xenarthrins, and xenarthrins are a group of animals that include uh, things like armadillos, which are found in North America. How long are their tails? How long are their tails? Um, I'd say between about like 16 inches and 20 inches, something like that. Uh, what's their closest relative? So their closest relatives are the giant anteaters, but they are related. Whoa! <laughs> 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 Woo. Um, they are related to sloths and anteaters, or excuse me, sloths and uh, armadillos. Uh, but that's a little bit more distant. How do they defend themselves from predators? So if these guys get scared, you saw those really big claws on their forepaws there, their front paws. They'll actually stand up and they'll swipe at the, the predators. Um, they're not very good at fighting, so they really don't want to. Um, so they'll only really do that if they're backed into a corner. <laughs> But as you can see, they're very, very happy right now. Uh, Peterson's hanging out with Francine. He's getting all sorts of really good worms. And you can kind of see his gross but uh, useful saliva all over that test tube right there. What? And you can also see how he's using his tail to hold on to the branch. So he's a very talented climber. <laughs> what does their coat feel like? So their coat is really, really thick. And the reason for that is because when you go and disturb an ant mound, you know, what do you think happens? All the ants are going to come right up, you know, right rushing out and go after you. So that coat is so thick that the ants can't really get through it. Um, there are areas around their paws and, of course, around their face that are still a little bit more vulnerable and sensitive, but that gives them another little barrier. So it's kind of a, a wiry fur. They're not soft and, and fluffy. They're very wiry and thick. How many ants can they eat in one day? In one day, they can be eat between eight thousand and nine thousand ants so a lot of ants where do they live at brookfield zoo so these guys live over in the hamill family play zoo and when you walk in the building you'll probably smell them before you see them uh, but they are on exhibit but they're also part of our animal ambassador program so these guys will come out for chats around the park and um, different you know they visit different areas as well so you might see them out and about and we do kind of fun stuff like this where you can get up close and, and see them foraging and active during the day are they endangered? They are not currently endangered. Um, right now, they're listed as least concern. Um, in certain areas of their range, they are considered threatened, but overall, they're, they're not endangered, thankfully, um, because these guys are actually able to survive in a wide variety of habitats, and they're actually able to survive in areas that people have disturbed as well, so they're pretty adaptable. 
Oh, what do they eat? So out in the wild, they'll eat all sorts of uh, ants and termites and then overripe fruits that are really, really soft and squishy. Um, sometimes they'll eat honey too out in the wild. Um, here we give them mealworms, waxworms, and then we give them a diet that our nutritionist developed here too. That's kind of like um, liquid insects basically. Um, and then we, we, we give them a lot of treats too. So we give them an av avocado today and that's just kind of a treat food. They don't get that all the time. Uh, we give them some baby food. Um, I think today's selection was peach. Occasionally we'll give them pear, but, um, and then we try to mix it up too, because every animal uh, does like some variety in their day. So we try to make sure that they, they're always mentally stimulated and they always have different set smells and different tastes and things like that um, to just experiment and uh, play around with. How much do they weigh? Um, I don't recall offhand. Do you guys remember how much you weigh? About six kilograms. They're about six kilos, which is about uh, 13 to 14 pounds. Can you take them on walks? We do sometimes take them on walks around the zoo. And one of the, one of the really fun things to, to do is we'll, we'll watch these guys as they find little ant nests in between the cracks of the sidewalk. And then all of a sudden you just see thousands of ants scattering and making a break for it. <laughs> Um, but our, our commandos are very, very happy when that happens. How long are their nails? So depends on which foot you're looking at. So their back feet, they're kind of short. They're, they're only maybe like a little centimeter or so. Uh, but if you look at these really, really big nails on the front, <laughs> those, I don't know if we can see them here. Uh, those are actually about, uh, three or, about three inches long, maybe two and a half. And those are really, really good for defending themselves, for tearing the bark off of trees and just getting at ants and termites that might be hiding um, underneath things. But you can see those nails are so long that when they walk, they actually walk on the sides of their feet, on the front feet. Because if they walked flat-footed, those toes, or those toenails, could actually pierce the, the flats of their, uh, their feet. How big can they grow? <laughs> this is about maximum. Um, not much bigger than this. Um, so these guys are adults. Both of them are about eight years old, a little bit older than that. Um, so they're fully grown. They're not going to get much larger. And again, when, you're, when you climb trees, you don't want to be that big because the bigger you are, um, you know, the, there's, the, the more risk there is that a branch is going to break when you crawl across it because, you know, I was up in that tree. I couldn't go on the same branches that maybe Tallulah could. How many babies do they have? They usually have one baby at a time. Uh, and it's pretty cute because the baby will actually cling on to mom and just hold, hold on there for a while until they're big enough to go off on their own. How high can they climb? <laughs> I, I think that's only limited by the strength of the branches. So they can go up pretty high. I, they don't really like to go on the top because, again, if they go above the leaves and the branches and everything like that, they don't really have much cover. And animals like, again, harpy eagles or um, large owls could see these guys and try to grab them. How long is their tongue? So their tongue is about 11 inches long. It's so big that it kind of curls back around the skull a little bit uh, in order to fit inside their mouth. Do they make any noises? As adults, they really don't make noises. Um, the babies can make some noise. These guys, the, really the only noises they make are just kind of grunts and um, exhalations of air, things like that, just snorts. <laughs> um, where do they live in the wild? Like what kind of... Uh... Do so they live in the trees? They live, yeah, they live in forested areas. They live in both um, dry forests and rainforests. Um, like I mentioned before, they're very well adapted uh, to just general habitat. So they can live all over the place um, as long as there are trees around. Um, but again, you can find them all the way from Venezuela to the southern part of Brazil. They're all over the place. And then there are northern tamanduas that live in, uh, from Colombia to about the middle of Mexico, too. But again, these guys are southern tamanduas. Very similar, but a little bit different. How do they sleep? So they, they'll actually curl up in a little nook of the tree. Usually they'll try to find uh, a cavity to hide in or something like that. But in, you know, in a pinch, they can just find a little you know, Y in a branch, just curl up right here, and then they'll hold on and go to sleep. Are they nocturnal? They're primarily nocturnal, which means you know, they come out at night for the most part. Uh, but they've been observed being active during the day as well. And as you can see right now, they're very happy to be active during the day. Do they have leashes when they go for walks? Um, sometimes we do. Um, they're very good at sticking with us, so we don't always do that. Um, but they, are, they have been trained, and they, they will accept a leash, and they're okay with it. 
Uh, but it's not always necessary. They tend to follow the food, and as long as we have worms for them, they're fine hanging out with us. They don't need to go elsewhere. Do they ever play with each other? They do sometimes. Sometimes they'll wrestle. They get a little bit pushy sometimes, and I think sometimes Tulula gets a little bit sick of Peterson, but, <laughs> but they're buddies. And they just, again, they live together over the play zoo, so they're, they're very used to hanging out together. How big is their social group? So usually they're, they're mostly solitary, um, but again, if there's one or two in the area, they might hang out together for a little bit. And you know, our two tomandos here do like hanging out with each other. Uh, but in the wild, you'll generally find one at a time. Do their tails have bones? Yeah, yeah. They, they do have bones down the length of the tail. Um, that's one of the ways that they can, um, they're able to grip with that tail because there are muscles attached to those bones that kind of flex it so they can grab onto branches. Uh, can they jump from tree to tree? They can't, so they're not really good at jumping. Um, they're really built for climbing. They don't really have the right muscles to kind of fling themselves like a flying squirrel or anything like that. Um, but in a pinch, they can move pretty darn quick. So if there are two branches from two different trees touching each other, they can get over to that second tree really, really fast if they feel threatened. Are their tails strong enough that they could hang just by their tails? Yes, yeah, they can actually hang just by the tails, but not for, a lo not for an extended period of time, just for a little bit. Um, so I have been informed we are running out of bugs. Um, unfortunately, these guys don't work for free. Um, so we are going to have to wrap it up. Uh, but once again, thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you for watching all our uh, Bringing the Zoo to You chats. And thank, for, <laughs> thank you for hanging out with our Tamanduas. And also, thank you for your support of Brookfield Zoo. Have a good day.